Okay, so welcome back to this uh, uh, video on uh, the multinomial distribution. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the marginals of the multinomial distribution. So that's the topic for this video, marginals of the multinomial distribution. Okay, uh, so uh, let me just uh, remind you what we had. We had, uh, we had k baskets, so here's a basket, here's a basket, etc. all the way down to the um, kth basket. And then we had some tennis balls over here, uh, n tennis balls, so let's have those. These are the n tennis balls, and we had a great big probability distribution here, uh, which contained every possible outcome of ascribing these n tennis balls into these k baskets. Uh, so here's a possibility, you put all n tennis balls in basket 1 and no tennis balls anywhere else, okay? And uh, we have worked out in previous videos that um, you, well, firstly what we said is you could ascribe individual random variables, you could have x1, uh, which is a random variable which ascribes a number between 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n, and it ascribes this number to each outcome, and basically it's going to ascribe each outcome the number of tennis balls that go into basket 1, and similarly we could create all the way down to uh, van random variable xk, so we've created a random variable x2 which ascribed you the number of tennis balls in basket 2, uh, we've created random variable x3, x4, x5, etc, and then there's xk, um, again ascribing you a number between 0, 1, 2, 3, and all the way up to n, and it, it ascribes uh, you the number of tennis balls that were in basket k. So each of these um, outcomes uh, will be ascribed a number by each one of these random variables. So when I say, uh, the, uh, well, firstly let's remember that we can then have the whole, um, the whole uh, joint random variable, which was this x uh, vector thing, uh, which was ascribing you a vector in Rk, and we have seen that the probability that, uh, let's say, x, capital X, is equal to, uh, let's say, some little x1, and we're running out of paper, so I'm going to go over, oh no, I don't want to lose this picture that I've spent so much time drawing now, so even though we've got paper on the other side, well, get a new piece of paper, well, don't worry, I will use the other side of that paper in some other video. Okay, uh, so, um, Alright, so if we ask, oh dear, that's why I prefer going onto a, uh, onto a different side. So the probability that x, this x vector is equal to some specific vector, so little x1, little x2, all the way through to little xk, uh, we know that that is given by, we worked this out in the previous video, uh, that it's given by n factorial times the Euler product i is equal to 1 to k, uh, the probability vector p, um, let's say pi, xi uh, to the power of little xi uh, divided by uh, little xi uh, factorial and that's if this big vector x well this this vector basically will be multinomially distributed uh, you have k baskets m tennis balls and let's say we have this vector p uh, which is um, the vector which describes the probabilities that an individual tennis ball will go into each basket so here's p1 p2 through to pk Okay, so that's the setup that we've had so far. Now, uh, when I say I want the marginals, what I mean is forget the rest of these uh, random variables here. I just want to know what the probability distribution of x1 is, or I just want to know what the probability distribution of x3 is. You're perfectly entitled to do that. Uh, these are random variables, and you can ask what is the probability distribution on these um, on these probability spaces where the uh, outcomes are real numbers. You are perfectly at your will to do that. We'd quite like to find what the probability mass function, let's say, of uh, the random variable x1 is for it equaling some little value. Okay, uh, so let's try and work that out. Well, one of the ways you could go from the for, to get the marginals from uh, from the um, joint probability uh, mass function, which is this thing here, is you could sum up. You could say, okay, I want to know what is the probability that little x one is equal to some little x one. Let's say. Well, what you then do is you say, okay, fix little x one in here. Now all the others are allowed to vary. So they can take on absolutely any value, because if they do take on absolutely any value, this outcome here will still be ascribed the same value of x1, because x1, this big random variable x1, doesn't care what how uh, what the rest of them are, it just cares what little x1 is. So I'm saying fix little x1, there is some number of tennis balls left over, which is n minus x1, you ascribe the rest of those tennis balls in whatever way you want, I don't care. Um, 
and uh, basically they'll all be ascribed the same value of x1. So if we want the probability that little x1 is equal to x1, it's equal to the sum over every possible way that you can ascribe, so let's say x2 plus x3 plus all the way up to xk needs to equal n minus x1 and x, all of these numbers, so let's say x2, x3, um, so I should say just xi, needs to be an element of the set 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n. So every possibility that satisfies those conditions for values x2, x3, xk, you sum over all of them and you work out the probability that uh, x bar is equal to uh, this vector x1, x2 through xk. So basically you're letting x2 to xk vary. They are not fixed numbers. x1 is your fixed number and uh, you're letting it vary over every single possibility that satisfies these conditions here. Okay? And you're summing them all up and the way you'd work out what this probability is is through this joint PMF here. That gives you the exact value for this and you'd sum it all up and you, we could do that but it's a difficult problem. It's just difficult computationally to manage this sum where you take every single possibility here. There is a better way of doing this basically and the better way of doing this is to note that basically we could we don't care where the tennis balls go in here. So what about just sort of thinking of them all as one great basket, which is um, the great basket, the super basket, and I'll do it in a different colour. Let's think of them all as a super basket, which is just the super basket, which is you don't throw it into x1, not x1, or you fail to throw it into x1, and that should be um, that should be sending messages. Uh, so not x1, so a super basket, not x1. And what is the probability that you throw your ball into this super basket, not x1? Well, it's probability that you throw it into basket x2 plus the probability that you throw it into basket uh, x, um, sorry, that you throw it into basket um, three plus all the way up to the probability that you throw it into basket k, which is just equal to 1 minus the probability that you throw it into basket 1. Okay? Right. So, uh, if we now want to work out what the probability that x1 is equal to x, little x1 is, we could just, uh, we could go back to the, um, to uh, this other probability distribution, a uh, probability space that we considered when we were trying to work out the PMF for the multinomial distribution. So uh, we could think about all n tennis balls. So you list out your n tennis balls and you list out where those n tennis balls go. So the first tennis ball can either go into go into basket 1 or it cannot go into basket 1. So let's say it goes into basket 1, then the second one it can not go into basket 1, then it can go into basket 1, not 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 go, etc. And you need to tell me whether for all the n tennis balls whether they go into basket 1 or they don't go into basket 1. And again the probability that it doesn't go into basket 1 is 1 minus p1 and the probability that it does go into basket 1 is p1. So basically what we then do is we say okay, we want an event in here, so let's say this is an event here, this is event E, which is the event that containing all outcomes which include x11, ones. so I want x11 ones in these, this great list, and I want uh, n minus x1 n's, so I want x1 of these little ones, and I want uh, the n's to sum up to n minus, little n minus x1, uh, big n's, okay. Uh, so, uh, the way that you would uh, work that out is you need the, uh, well, you could use, you could apply the multinomial distribution now for two, for two things, but this is just the binomial distribution, basically. This is um, a problem we've seen many times before, because how many of the, how many, all the outcomes in here will be permutations of 1, 1, 1, 1, x1 times, and n, 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 how many times do I have to say n, uh, little n minus x1 times. Okay, so they're going to be all permutations of that, and we know that the number of ways of permuting this, the number of ways of permuting that, and I mean by permutations, I mean that, you know, something like um, this is a different permutation of uh, these um, x1 ones and how many have I got? Uh, n minus x1 uh, big n's. Okay, so there's a different permutation. So I want the total number of permutations is going to be the total number of things, which is n things. You've got overall 
n things, because you add x1 to n minus x1, you get n things. So you get n divided by um, x1 factorial, because you're going to overcount, because these are all the same, considered the same thing. And then we need n minus x1, the total number of big n's factorial as well. But this is just n choose x1, basically. Okay, uh, so that gives us the total number of things, and again we are going to presume that these trials are independent, so strictly speaking what we do is we'd say, you know, set up uh, random variables from, uh, you know, set up little n random variables which are going to ascribe to each outcome uh, a zero if it doesn't go into uh, it doesn't go into basket one, and a one if it does go into basket one. Uh, you know, these will all be Bernoulli distributed uh, with probability P1. We've done this many times before, and basically you'll get this great big sum, and it's going to be binomially distributed. And the way that you would, uh, the quick way of seeing that is that all uh, the probability of getting a single one of these outcomes, so let's say what's the probability of getting this outcome, one, 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 n, 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 n. Well, because the trials are independent, because um, me get it, what happens to the first ball does not affect what happens to the second ball, or the third ball, or any of the other balls, this is just the probability that the first ball goes into 1, which is just P1, at times P1 again, so you need P1 times P1 times P1 times P1, because all of these ones just have probability P1 that you get it into into the first basket, and then the probability that you don't get it into the first basket is 1 minus P1, so you need however many n's you have of those, so you have x1 1's, and you have uh, 1 minus P1, 1 minus P1, let's put another 1 minus P1 up there as well, uh, 1 minus P1, 1 minus P1, and just to make it a bit more clear, I'll put the time symbols there to denote that it's going over a line. And uh, the total number of those we have, let me give, get it a big pen, so the total number of these things that we have here would be uh, N minus X1. Okay, so, but basically, the probability of the event E is what we want to know, which is the event that you get X1 1's and N minus X1 N's. The probability of E is just because you can write E, because this is a... Uh, finite probability space, there's a finite number of outcomes, you can split E into the individual outcomes within it. So, um, for instance, this is an individual outcome in E. So you can split E into, uh, let's say, the union of uh, the sets containing the singletons, uh, single outcomes, where those outcomes are elements of E. So you basically say, okay, there are loads of outcomes in E, put all of those outcomes in a set by itself, call that an event, and then the event E is just the disjoint union of all those events. Okay, uh, but then by the second axiom of probability spaces, this is just the sum of all the any event that's in E, or the sum of the probabilities that it's in that, or the probability of that single event having happened. Okay, that single term, that event containing the single outcome happening, basically, uh, which is the event that that individual outcome happens, if you like. Okay, uh, and basically, no matter what your permutation is, this is a different permutation of this, and these all these events in here are just different permutations of this. All their probabilities are going to be exactly the same, because they all have x1 1s, so they all have p1 to the power of x1, so this is p1 to the power of x1, and they all have 1 minus p1 to the power of n, little n minus x1. The reason being that they all have x1 1s, and they all have n minus x1 n's, and this is the probability of getting an n, and this is the probability of getting a 1, and because the trials are independent, you just multiply them all together. So, this great big sum just becomes uh, a constant sum, and all it will therefore be is how many of these are you adding up times this. So the number we're adding up is, we agreed, the total number of, ev of outcomes in this event E was n choose x1. So we get n choose x1 times this probability p1 to the x1, uh, 1 minus p1 to the n minus x1. Okay, so what we have therefore found is that x1 it has a probability mass function binomial, so it's binomial uh, with um, number of trials n and probability of success p1. So basically, you just view uh, view the um, uh, view the uh, outcome that it goes into basket one as um, 
as being a success and view it not going into basket one, i.e. going into any of the other baskets as being failure. So it is just um, N trial success and failure basically. So that is an easier way to see that the marginal distribution is this. And it's far easier than trying to do um, this great big sum that, um, that we'd have got if we were just following formulas.